Hello, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. PayPal and Patreon links are both down below for anybody who wants to support me. Only do so if you actually can. Time for another monthly update on the present U.S. drought conditions in the southwestern U.S. So, starting things off as usual with the two largest mega reservoirs, Lake Mead and Lake Powell. These are both enormous storage reservoirs located along the Colorado River whose purpose is, despite their location, not actually to supply water to the middle of nowhere, or in the case of Lake Mead, to supply water to only Las Vegas. Although by all means, Las Vegas' water does come from Lake Mead. However, those two supply water to a much greater amount of people, a much larger region, including huge portions of Utah, Nevada, Arizona, and also a huge chunk of the water that is consumed by Southern California. A big chunk of its water gets piped over through the Colorado River Aqueduct, which draws water through a set of pipelines at specific points along the Colorado River. And in order to keep the river level adequate at those points, in order to supply Southern California through the aqueduct system, Lake Mead and Lake Powell have to constantly, nowadays at least, over the last two and a half decades or so, as the drought conditions in the southwest have become basically perpetual, they have to release excess water to make sure that the river flow, the river level stays adequate. It has resulted in them gradually losing permanent water level. They, just as much so as any other lakes or reservoirs across the world, have seasonal and yearly cycles that they go through where they regain or lose more water level than during other times of the year based on what times they get more rainfall or snow melt and whatnot. However, for these first couple decades of the 21st century, they have consistently lost more water level each year than they regain, with some of the years, especially these last few for Lake Mead, being quite enormous losses. This year in particular, Lake Mead has already lost almost 22 feet of water level. Starting the year off at 1,067 elevation feet, as the U.S. lake system is measured in elevation feet, or the elevation of the surface of the water above sea level. Starting this drawdown season off at about 1067, it has since dropped to 1,045, or rather 1,045 and a half. And in terms of what that looks like percentage-wise, how much of the water volume, well, Lake Mead was already down to only 34% full at the start of this drop for this year, and now, hitting 1,045.5 elevation feet, that has dropped it by an entire 6 points this year, from 34 down to only 28% full. So it's looking like it's probably going to end its reduction season this year at... 27, maybe only 26% full, its lowest point ever since the reservoir was first filled. Lake Mead likely only has a couple of years left, which is going to put it right in the expected time frame for the U.S. mass internal migration away from the West and the Southwest. I have a specific different video covering that that I'll put a link to up in the corner if you want to see that. Lake Powell was already down to only 24% full, However, Lake Powell has been getting a bit more of a refill this year than it did in some previous years via withholding some more water within it and thus compensating for that by releasing more water from Lake Mead than Lake Mead otherwise would have. And also, as is quite visible on Flaming Gorge Reservoir's chart, by basically sacrificing the Flaming Gorge Reservoir. Flaming Gorge of which being a large reservoir located further upstream, not even on the Colorado River, actually on the Green River, which empties into the Colorado River. In terms of its water level, Lake Powell was down to 3,522 elevation feet a couple months ago, back in April, I believe. And now it has been restored back up to 3,536. And the reason they're specifically doing that for Lake Powell, specifically because the intake system for the power generation turbines at the dam was not that much farther down from where the water had gotten down to. Those intakes are located between 3490 and 3500 elevation feet, and as I said, the water level had gotten all the way down to only 3522, whereas Lake Mead started this depletion season at 1067, 
and its turbine intake levels are down closer to around 950. Now speaking of Utah, Utah has continued regaining some across its various reservoirs throughout the state. Utah maintains a collective total percent full measurement system, and last year's drop was pretty dramatic, dropping by dozens of percentage points, and has regained a bit across the different reservoirs, previously up to a collective total of a bit above 44%. Now over the past month or so, it's regained about three more percentage points, up to a collective 47% full across them all. However, this is just about the point most years where things start going down. Down in Arizona, or basically Phoenix, as Phoenix is where the majority of Arizona's population is, the Phoenix area is supplied by a number of surrounding reservoirs, which also measure on collective total percentage full. And normally, quote-unquote normally, the area would go through a general cycle over the course of a year, lose 10 to 15 percentage points, and then rebound with the Arizona monsoon season. However, over the course of time, they've gradually been not replenishing all of what they lose each year. Although they are in a better position than Utah, however, the Phoenix area has already entered its degradation phase of this year. The past two updates, they had gradually lost about 1% each month, from 72 down to 71, then 71 down to 70. Now, over this past month, they've lost 3 in one month, from 70% down to 67 and over in the gargantuan source of demand, California. Lake Shasta, the largest reservoir in California, has not been losing water level yet this year. However, it also did not regain anywhere near all of what it lost last year. Last year, it dropped from about 980 elevation feet all the way down to almost 880. And it did not get all the way back up to 980. It only got back up to about 947 or 946, which has it just under 40% full. Lake Orville actually did recover what it lost last year, having dropped from 730 down to 630 in elevation feet. It recovered all the way back up to 777, and now it has started dropping for this year, and has thus far dropped from 777 elevation feet down to 769 which represents a drop from 54.8 down to 52.6% of its total water volume capacity. Lake Trinity, the second biggest reservoir in California, last year had dropped from 2,280 down to about 2,210 elevation feet, then regained up to about 2,230. This year, it's dropping down to 2,222 elevation feet. However, now it has kind of stalled for the moment right at a flat 30% of its total water volume capacity. And New Malone's seems to be the default one this year, at least so far. Last year it dropped from up around 1,000 or so down to something like 910, and then it didn't recover much again, up to about 940. And now it's been dropping thus far down to 917 elevation feet, which has it now at almost down to only one-third full, currently 34.5%. And the San Luis Reservoir did bounce back from last year, at least in relative comparison to what it lost, and was brought up to about 450 elevation feet before it began dropping, and has now dropped down to about 438, representing a drop from about 75% full down to between 67 and 68. And what about down in the San Joaquin Valley? How about the San Joaquin River, where they get a fair amount of their water from? How's that doing? Not, it, it's doing even worse. It's doing even worse than last time. Normally at this particular time of year, it would be something like 600 cubic feet of water per second. However, it is actually down at something closer to 60. Six with one zero. All right, and that's it for this one. So thank everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. You can support me through PayPal, Patreon if you want. Only do so if you actually can. I have tons of other episodes about all kinds of different things and issues on the channel if you want to watch or listen to any of them. You can also go subscribe to my Cats channel for less depressing content. We're trying to get her up to 1,000 subs before November because that's about the deadline for her to be able to get ad revenue. But no matter what happens, whatever becomes of me, may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.